Hello random people on the internet, my name is Banana, and today we are talking about how to reach the end game. This is a video that I've made twice before, but I feel like a lot, <laughs> and when I say a lot, I mean a lot has changed since I last made this video, because dungeons came out, and I mean, that's a big enough change already on itself, alright guys? But seriously, there is a lot of things to go over here, and if you want the short answer on how to reach the end game, Dungeons. Thanks for watching. But if you want the long answer, I definitely have a lot of tips. I personally have been grinding a lot. I was at 35 mil the other day, and I'm at 521 mil from grinding dungeons and just grinding the game. So I'm going to tell you how to get some coins, how to just do stuff in general, because you can do a lot of this stuff without coins, actually. You can get pretty endgame for a very low price, and we're just going to go over everything that you need to know to become the best player you can in Hypixel Skyblock. But before we get to that, I just want to say if this video helps you out at all, or if you enjoy it, I would really appreciate a like and a subscription. Also, leave a comment down below if I miss any tips, because I'm sure that will help people if I miss something. And if you have a great idea for how people can start progressing in the game earlier, that would definitely be nice to leave down below. So, how do you reach the end game? Well, the key to Skyblock at any point is money. Money is going to be the way that you do pretty much everything in Skyblock because you, having coins is just being able to actually live. You can do pretty much anything if you have coins. So my recommendation to you is going to be to go to the bit shop, go buy gems, and then sell your cookies to the bazaar. You're welcome. I'm just kidding. That's not what I'm actually going to tell you to do. I'm actually going to give you a bunch of tips here. My first tip for getting money is cane. I'm sure a lot of you know this, I'm sure a lot of you have done this before, but building a cane farm is going to make you a lot of coins. It's going to be pretty awesome. If you're using the base island size, you need two and a half layers to infinitely farm cane. That means you never have to stop. You can just grind and grind until your heart wants you to quit and until you have to go to sleep. But I'm going to recommend that you grind cane early on because you're going to need some money to do this method. This is not a method on how to go from early to late game specifically. It's going to be more on how to just get to that end game level from late game. And sure, th this tip sort of fits for the entire game. If you just started off and you build a cane farm, you're going to be doing okay. Like you, You're going to be fine if you just like build that farm and then just start grinding instantly. But especially if you're late game, especially if you have something like an elephant pet, if you have something like the cane hoe, there's a lot of options to get to high money just from grinding cane. And that's going to be my recommendation for early on. Another new recommendation that I can actually give you for money is doing enchanting. Enchanting is actually really good right now to try and make a quick buck. As long as you go in here and you match up your titanics whenever you get into the super pairs game, you can actually make money. If you get a good book, like I got a protection seven, I believe from there. And that sold for like 18 mil. And it did not cost me 18 mil to do one of those super pairs. So if you do your enchanting every day, you're actually going to have a chance to make some pretty good buck right there as long as you are making sure that you don't match up anything you don't really need and that you try and find as many titanics as possible so that you can balance out the cost of your enchanting but that's another way that you can make some passive and easy money so once you get your money now what what are you gonna do well as i said earlier dungeons is a great way to get endgame not only in the items but it is the best money making method in the game I was playing like a week ago, and I was at 35 mil. I'm now at 500 mil because Dungeons is pretty nuts. It's a really, really good way to just play the game, get better at the game, and get that cash money once you have all the stuff that you want. But to go into Dungeons, you do want to have a little bit of coins in your purse. Not only do you need items to go into Dungeons, but you need enough to buy some of those rare 
like high quality drops from the floors. The highest price that you're going to see on anything is going to be 35 million coins. So you can go in before 35 mil, but if you get a Necron's handle or if you get a precursor eye on one of those floors, you are going to be kicking yourself because you are not going to be making that money. I know someone who went and they did floor seven. They were on like their 20th run and they got a Necron's handle and they had 10 million coins and they couldn't buy it. They missed out on 400 million coins right there, 400 mil profit as well. So definitely go in knowing either that you are not gonna be able to buy something if you get it or go in with that correct amount of money. But a lot of you are probably saying, I can't do dungeons. I cannot grind right now because I am just not good at the game. Well, I'm gonna give you some recommendations on sets that you can use and ways that you can beat some of the floor that is sort of cheesy, but is gonna allow you to progress further in dungeons than you normally would have been able to. First, let's talk class selection. So healer, this is, uh, I wouldn't recommend this for an early game player because you're just going to keep reviving yourself if you die. And that's gonna screw your team's score, but healer is okay. I mean, you can survive things a little better, but the other classes I would say are a bit better. So mage is a rich man's class. Hyperion is the best weapon in the game, but it costs about six, it costs like, what, 700 million coins to get a max Hyperion right now. I don't know if that's worth it for you. If you, if you're watching this video, you probably shouldn't play mage unless you are planning on just grinding it up with an inferior weapon that isn't Hyperion. Archer, sort of the same thing. You need like six bone meringues for Archer to be at max effectiveness and all of them need overload and just a lot of things. So that's also a bit of a yikes. But Tank and Berserk are actually going to be two pretty good early game classes. And that is just because of the pets that you can run with them and like how you can still be effective. Because the whole point of Tank is that you're supposed to be surviving things and you can actually run a build that's going to give you a lot of effective health and it's going to be based around the baby yeti pet the baby yeti pet is actually a really really good tank pet and that's really weird for me to say but it gives a hundred percent of your strength as defense i believe uh, I think it's that much. Yeah, it's 100% of your strength as defense. So if you run forceful talismans, if you run a very strength-based armor set, such as just like some Shadow Assassin armor, because Shadow Assassin isn't too expensive in the modern day. If we go and look at some of these pieces, you can see the boots are really cheap and you're still going to be getting a lot of strength from this. So if you run that, you run all that stuff, you are going to have an insane amount of health while also being able to deal out tons and tons of damage if you're running the baby yeti pet with tank same goes for berserker because berserker can pretty much do the exact same thing they just uh are berserker instead I, I think those classes are not amazing in the late game but for some of the worst players you can run some really weird setups like for tank you can also just run a blue whale pet with a dwarf turtle shelmet or something like that and you're going to be able to survive pretty effectively there I think the main point of getting into dungeons when you haven't played it that much is surviving. It get, there's a turning point at like some point where you're going to switch from surviving to trying to kill everything. But for a while at least, you want to just make your goal keeping yourself alive and learning what to do in dungeons. You want to learn secrets. You want to learn just puzzles and everything so that you aren't useless to your team. If you can, I would definitely recommend spending five bucks on Skyblock Extras. This is a really good mod for doing a lot of dungeon stuff. You can solve puzzles faster. You can solve terminals in floor seven if you get to that point. So this mod is really good, but pretty much I'm going to just say play Berserker or Tank if you are more early game. If you think that you're gonna eventually buy a Hyperion, maybe play Mage, but there are already a lot of Mages out there and there's not too many tanks and people do love seeing tank. If you can't afford Shadow Assassin, I'm gonna recommend something like the Bonzo Mask. Bonzo Mask is a really good helmet. I still wear it in Floor 7 and I'm Catacombs level 33. I'm also gonna recommend the Necromancer Lord set if you are struggling with surviving with that Shadow Assassin strategy. If you're running Necromancer Lord boots and leggings, that's gonna cost you like 
literally no coins. It's going to cost you like less than six mil to get both of them. So I definitely recommend that there. The chest plate is going to be a bit more expensive. So for that, I'm going to recommend a zombie knight chest plate. Zombie knight chest plate has been the budget chest plate for a long time. This thing's really cheap. It gives you sort of okay stats. You know, my main man 30 virus still uses it. So obviously best chest plate in the game right there. But that's going to be my armor and class recommendations. Now, let's talk about the weapon recommendations, because there are a couple good options, I would say, here. For one, the Flower of Truth. A benefit of the Flower of Truth is that you can get it for free. You can go into Floor 6, kill Golems, and hope that you get a drop of a Ancient Rose. This isn't that hard to do with some of the current strats of damage, so if you get a Flower of Truth, this is going to be awesome, and it's going to work really well with that Baby Yeti strat, because you can see the strength on it goes pretty damn high it goes up to 1170 for me and that's with no potato books no reforges or anything so flower of truth is going to be really good but if you don't want to go for that you can also go for a livid dagger you can grind this out from floor five so the floor is going to be a bit easier because floor seven can get a little bit or not floor seven floor six can get a little bit hard so the livid dagger is also going to be a strat it's going to be one of the best bang for your buck weapons because it's going to give you crit chance attack speed and, you know, just more of every stat, the 100% crit damage from behind is going to be really good. So those are the two big weapons that I would recommend. Anything that you get that you can afford that would be better, such as a giant sword with the withered uh, reforge on there and then the one for all enchant, that's going to be really good. But I'd say Flower of Truth and Livid Dagger are enough to go in to Floor 7 with. So once you have all that setup that I said, the armor, the weapons, you're going to just want to try and run Floor 7. But how do you do Floor 7 if you're a complete noob? Well, there's going to be a painful way and there's going to be a easy but sort of expensive way. Not super expensive if you're grinding cane and you're being effective with your time, but you can go into party finder you can just look for parties you know you can try and find one you can see there's a lot of lower level like 27 25 23 and 24 there level 17 party that guy just wants a carry though so there are these lower level parties that you can possibly join but i would recommend trying to find a carry on here there are a lot of discords that do carry services but then there's also people who will just type in here comp carry eight mil per all right now what does that mean that pretty much means you pay eight mil they will get you a completion okay of floor seven floor seven is going to be the stepping stone for doing a lot of things in the game because the power creep from floor six to floor seven is absurd <laughs> storm armor necron armor just all the wither armor nuts hyperion best weapon in the game everything from floor seven is crazy so if you can get a completion there you can use everything from necron you don't need any levels so you can just grind money from that point so I know it may be disappointing to a lot of you that you have to play dungeons to get endgame, but as of right now, December 12th, 2020, that is the most endgame that you can possibly get. And Floor 7 stuff is really, 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 really good. When new stuff comes out and Hyperion is just stomping everything into the ground, you can thank me for telling you to go get it because, oh my god, if you are not playing dungeons... You are missing out on the best items and the best weapons in the game right now. A lot of this stuff, like as I said earlier in the video, a lot of this stuff can be gotten for free. If we look in the boss collections, a lot of the Necromancer Lord stuff that I was talking about, like the helmet there and the chest plate actually, you can get for free if you grind floor 6. If you grind floor 5, you can get a Livid Dagger at only 150 kills. So a lot of these are doable early on just by you playing them and getting them for free so you don't need too much money for a lot of this if you want to get a hyperion by yourself for example if you grinded everything out from the chest personally it would only cost you 65 million coins to craft your hyperion compared to the 700 million that you would pay on ah so i definitely recommend playing the floors trying to learn how to do a lot of stuff but it might be a little hard for you guys. I, I know everything is sort of difficult because, I mean, the game, it, it has a skill gap now of people who have a lot of time and a lot of money and people who don't. Because some of these high catacombs level players, they can just stomp through the floor. And all the, the little boys down at the bottom, 
they really can't do much. But what are you going to do? So that's going to be pretty much it for my tutorial on how to get endgame. Go play dungeons. <laughs> that's as far as you pretty much need to go. Obviously, I did talk about the money-making methods earlier on here. You obviously want to have minions down that are getting you something. Mine are getting me mining and farming skill. But definitely do your enchanting every day. That's a huge recommendation there. And then grind cane if you don't want to grind dungeons when it comes to money. But definitely the money from dungeons cannot be passed up. It is really good. Last night alone, I made 170 mil in a like session. And that was just from like... That was less than 50 runs right there. And also, I didn't actually talk about this. Netherwart, really good to farm. I'm sure that you, you guys have heard of this. There, Netherwart makes like 9 mil an hour from NPC if you're like farming 50. So if you get high farming level and then grind Netherwart, you can have all the money in the world that you want. Especially since Netherwart is now in that sack of seeds thing. Or in its own sack. I, I don't know how farming works. I don't do it. But, yep, that's going to be all. Hope you enjoyed. Hope it helped you out. Please smash that like button. And I will talk to you guys in the next video. Peace out.